Welcome to Nobilis Erotica, the best science fiction and fantasy erotica anthology podcast in the known universe. This week's story, Magical Lesbian Power Plays. This is episode 454. I am your host, Nobilis Reed. This episode of Nobilis Erotica is sponsored by the generous patronage of Nobilis Erotica listeners. To help out paying the authors and voices that create these stories, visit patreon.com slash nobilis. The March patron-funded story is Heart's Thief by Emily L. Byrne. Emily is a geek who lives in Minneapolis with her wife and the cats that own them. Her stories have appeared in such venues as Bossier, Spy Games, Forbidden Fruit, Summer Love, Best Lesbian Erotica 20th Anniversary Edition, Witches, Princesses, and Women at Arms, the Nobilis Erotica Podcast, Blood in the Rain 3, Year's Best Lesbian Erotica Volume 2 and Volume 3, The Sexy Librarian's Dirty 30 Volume 3, Candy Lovers, and the Mammoth Book of Uniform Erotica. She can be found on Twitter as at Emily L. Byrne, and her website is writeremilylburn.blogspot.com. The story is narrated for us by Lauren Harris, the author of the urban fantasy series Spellhounds, assistant editor of Orson Scott Card's Intergalactic Medicine Show, and her narration is available on Audible and various short fiction podcasts. You can find her website at laurenbharris.com. Here we go. Heart's Thief by Emily L. Byrne Narrated by Lauren Harris Ashara slipped through the window, pulling her hook and rope in behind her. The gesture came so easily, it was as if she hadn't just had to climb the wall and pick the lock. All around her, the room was still and dark as an abyss, and the night breeze sent a light shiver over her exposed arms. She wondered why she sensed no guards, no magical alarms. After all, she had come for the heart of El Kiraz, a ruby big as a man's fist. It was said that the stone had great powers if one had the strength to command it. Surely a gem merchant of Shirkalia's status would at least have mortal guards to protect such a jewel. Rumor held that she'd had one of the most famous wizards in the city as her lover, She'd have asked for wards, have asked him to send the cold blue light of his power around her most cherished possessions. The price of such protection would have been nothing more than pillow talk to someone as wealthy as Kalia. And yet there was nothing, not so far. She strained her senses as far as she could in the stillness, then accepted defeat. If there were wards here, her limited magic could not find them. Pulling a small stone from her pocket, she whispered a charm over it. The rock took on a pale green glow, bright, yet not enough to light the room. She tossed it to the floor a few steps away, then pulled out another one and repeated the charm. Soon, a line of the small stones cast their pale glow in a path across the deserted room, at least as far as the bolted door in the wall opposite. Ashara stepped forward carefully, gathering up the stones as she went. Their light winked out when they vanished into her pocket, but it would take only a word to set them aglow again. Old Marian had done his work well. She almost smiled, the way she did when there was no one around to see the way it twisted the long scar that ran from temple to chin down her thin face. Best not to think on how grotesque it made her appear. Best to look as if she thought nothing, felt nothing. No one shrank away from her in the market then. She wrinkled her nose, an old pain flitting across her features. Of course, if she were caught here, the governor would hang her and there would be no more worries about her looks. She reached the door just as the thought crossed her mind, and it was enough to make her pause and hesitate. But it was too late now. She could be hung merely for being here, even if she took nothing. Better to die trying, or better yet, live to succeed and to leave the city of El Kiraz. She wrapped the bolt on the door with the rags she'd brought with her for that purpose. Again, she whispered a few words, then tugged gently. The bolt came away in her hand as silently as a sigh. That left only the lock. 
She reached into her pockets and produced several small tools and one of the stones. She let it glow just enough so she could see to work and picked the door's lock as if she'd been born to it. For a moment, she wondered if this might be easier if she had. The children of the thieves' clan seemed much more skilled than she. She had only her training from Marian, nothing more. Yet here she was, opening the door to the treasure vault in one of the richest merchants' homes in the city. This time she did smile, and thought nothing of whether or not it improved her looks. Then she opened the door a crack so that she could peer inside. A loud, persistent hum from the room beyond made her shut the door immediately, heart racing in terror. She stood still, waiting for some unknown power to attack her from the other room, every limb straining to flee for a span of breaths. One, two, then a third. Still nothing. She forced herself to open the door again, this time wide enough for her lean form to slip inside. Now she could see the source of the sound. It came from a series of shining red stones perched on stone pillars along the wall. They were surrounded by locked chests, but Ashara paid no attention to these. She had not come for lesser treasure. She studied the stones on their pillars, and her jaw fell open in amazed horror for an instant. Sure, Kalia had earned her reputation for ingenuity. The merchant had hidden the heart among multiple false hearts. She stood motionless in front of them, trying to sense something, anything that would tell her which one was the right one. After what seemed like an eternity, she thought she could feel a spark, a whiff of magic. She scanned the row of stones again. There, that one on the far end. It felt different from the others. She approached it cautiously, wondering what kind of unseen guards the merchant had added to this room. Soon she was a few steps from it, and there she stopped, waiting for a sign of some sort. This stone, or rather the gold she could sell it for, would buy her way free. Always provided it was the right one. No more indenture to Marian. No more fleeing from her stepfather's fists and knife through the marketplace. She would take her coin and run far away from all of it. Perhaps in Kaldos or Ondas, she could find a sorcerer who could heal her face, or maybe even someone who would love her in spite of it. She stepped closer, reaching into her bag for the special charm that Marian had given her for the moment when she found the heart. Slowly, she reached out and held it above the red gem. She could see it pulse in the glow of her stone now, its center seeming to beat in some strange trick of the light. She reached for it with her other hand, moving cautiously until her fingertips barely stroked its surface. The resulting shock threw her across the room, causing her to drop her glowstone and Marian's charm. She collided with the stone wall opposite the heart with an exquisitely painful jolt before dropping to her knees on the floor. As she lay gasping for air, there was a whisper of a door opening and the faint scruff of soft slippers on the stone floor. Torches lit around the chamber with a low pop. A slender foot appeared under her nose, causing her to recoil backwards as if from a snake. Did you think my heart would be so easy to take, little thief? She looked up into Shirkalia's face and cringed. Not that the merchant looked cruel or even angry. On the contrary, her face was beautiful, all dark eyes and ebony skin, full lips pursed as if for a kiss. Under other circumstances, Ashara would have admired her beauty and sighed at the knowledge that such a one would never look at her. Now she shrank away, eyes wide with terror at her probable fate. So young to bear the mark of the blade. Kalia murmured as she bent over and ran a single cool finger down the scar on Ashara's cheek. Certainly too young to have entered here on your own unaided. She cupped Ashara's chin in her hand and tilted her face up so that Ashara's eye met her own and were swallowed by them. The merchant's eyes were demon dark and night sky deep and the young thief could no more look away than she could fly. Somehow, she remembered words and forced them to her lips. 
Discarding the ones that pleaded for her life, she selected from among the others. What are you going to do to me? A distant part of herself was pleased that her voice scarcely trembled. What do you think I should do to you, little thief? Kalia's hand tugged upward, pulling Ashara to her feet with the pressure. The heart approves of you, or you would have died when you touched it. That is something. What else can you do besides steal? Ashara paused, studying the merchant from under lowered lids. Her long robes draped themselves over sweet curves, and her lips held promises that the thief longed to hear. Greatly daring, she murmured, I can perform some household magics, lady. I can make you laugh. And she hesitated a moment before she continued, I can please you, lady. I can give you your heart's desire. Sure, Kalia threw back her head with a shout of startled laughter. You promise so little, small thief. How would a baby scavenger like you know anything of what my heart desires? Her eyes narrowed in amusement as she studied Ashar's face, her fingers never releasing their burning hold on her chin. Ashara took a deep breath, then let it out slowly as she closed her eyes. She reached out with all the power in her, stretching until she could touch Kalia's mind with her own. There, there it was, a memory so strong that it tasted like a sweet wine to her mind. She embraced it until it sent a wave of heat through her, lapping at her thighs and making her gasp. Eyes still closed, she reached for Kalia, pulling the merchant's face down to her own and kissing her with all of that memory in her mouth, her tongue. Now it was the merchant's turn to gasp, even as her body molded itself to Ashara's lean length. Ashara could feel the surprised desire fill the other woman's body until her blood ran hot with it, and she very nearly smiled. But that might break the illusion, might remind her that she held not the beloved of her past, but a scrawny stranger instead. And Kalia had never known a woman's touch before. She must go cautiously. A single misstep might cause her power to fail and drive the other woman to call for her guards. Then she would send Ashara to the gallows. Greatly daring, she touched her mind to Kalia's, reminding the other of the pleasure she had known. As the merchant's lip parted in a tiny moan, she broke off the kiss to trail her lips and tongue down Kalia's flesh to where her robe dipped above her breasts. She glanced upward in time to see the merchant's eyes close and her head tilt back. A gasp of pleasure escaped her lips as Ashara opened the robe to take her breast in her mouth. Her pleasure ran through Ashara like a bolt, making her knees tremble and her thighs slick with it. The thief pulled the merchant closer, her mouth hot and wet on all she could reach of Kalia's exposed flesh. Ashara's fingers reached for the sash around Kalia's waist opening the knot and tugging it apart as deftly as she had picked the lock to the merchant's house. Kalia moaned as Ashara's mouth met her overheated flesh. She reached out and seized handfuls of the thief's tunic, tugging it loose and over her head. Ashara found her face caught in the merchant's hands as the older woman stared into her face, wide eyes searching and lost. That was when Ashara realized that Kalia's lover was gone forever, killed in a sorcerous battle across the sea. The grieving emptiness that filled the merchant threatened to overwhelm her thoughts, and her mind spun, trying to free herself from the web of power she had built between them. Kalia's eyes opened then, as if she could somehow feel Ashara's efforts to escape. Her dark eyes met the thief's, and a single tear rolled down her cheek. Ashara froze, letting Kalia's sorrow wash over her in a wave. The two women stood, arms wrapped around each other, seemingly lost in each other's gaze for a span of heartbeats. The merchant spoke first. Perhaps you cannot give me my heart's desire after all, little thief. She raised her hand and ran her thumb along Ashara's jaw with a sigh. 
Then she began to pull away, and Ashara could feel herself being shut off from that awful pain. No, she yelped the word from instinct alone, reaching out to clutch the merchant's open robe with quick, desperate hands. Let me try. I think I can help you. It was the fear of a thief's death at the end of a rope that drove her words. She knew that it could be nothing more. Well, that and perhaps a bit of pity for the one who carried such a burden. Kalia gave her a long look, as if considering whether or not a fledgling scavenger could replace her heart's beloved even for a few hours. Through the web that still remained between them, Ashara could feel her desire, present and running like a river beneath her skin. She reached out and coaxed it, just a little, just enough so that she could smell it rising from between the merchant's legs. She did not smile, but stood waiting instead, with her hands on the other woman's waist, hoping for her agreement. Kalia pulled her close and kissed her hard full lips engulfing her narrow ones as Kalia's tongue sought her own. Then she broke away and seized Ashara's hand. Tugging the thief with her, she walked purposefully from the room where the red gems watched them and into the hallway beyond. She did not close her robe or insist that Ashara cover herself, so the thief assumed that the servants and guards were asleep at this hour. Or at least she prayed to all her gods that they were asleep. The web was not so strong that an interruption couldn't break it, reminding Kalia in full force that the woman she led down the corridor was an intruder, bent on taking what was hers. But they met no one before Kalia stopped at a door of studded timber, the imported wood alone worth more than all of Ashara's possessions put together. Perhaps I should take it instead of the heart. Ashara's lips twisted into the beginnings of a wry smile as she imagined herself carrying the huge, heavy door away from the merchant's palace and giving it to Marian in place of the gem. The thought vanished as Kalia pushed the door open to reveal a richly furnished bedchamber lit by a few sputtering candles. A huge bed hung with silky curtains stood in the middle of the room, all the other furnishings fading to insignificance beside it. When the merchant looked at it, Ashara could feel something in her link with Kalia, some increase in longing and pain that made her bite her lip to stop from responding to it. Kalia gave her a sidelong glance. Can you make yourself look like him? Her tone was cool and emotionless, with only the pain humming beneath it to suggest that the question had any significance. Ashara shook her head wondering whether or not to tell the merchant the nature of the link between them. Finally, she settled on a piece of the truth. I can make you feel something. Something like what you've felt in the past, as long as I can feel what you feel. Even as she spoke, she wondered if it was even part of the truth. Would her powers work on the merchant if the woman felt no desire for her? And how will this help me? Kalia released her hand and paced slowly toward the bed, stopping at a table where a jar of wine sat open. She poured some into two cups and offered the second one to Ashara. The thief took a nervous gulp of its contents while she considered the question and the striking curves of the merchant's body, now clearly displayed by her open robe. Kalia ran a hand over her belly, then reached up to cup her breast. One thumb stroked her nipple into hardness as she watched Ashara. Ashara's words caught in her throat, and Kalia smiled and slipped the robe off, dropping it to the floor. She reached down into the glistening, wet darkness between her legs with her other hand, caressing the folds of her flesh until it felt as if she was touching Ashara herself. The thief trembled, her feet lurching forward in a single step, hesitating, then lurching forward again. Now it felt as if the merchant controlled the web that linked them, but that was impossible. Somewhere in Ashara's mind, a voice told her to flee from the unknown, to run away from this unbearably lovely woman with the sad, sad eyes, to deny her desperate longing to touch and be touched. She managed to set the cup aside as Kalia moaned. 
Her fingers moved on her flesh more briskly now, as if she'd forgotten the thief was still there. Ashara was close enough to touch her now, and she reached out a fearful hand to touch the merchant's bare breast. Then she dropped to her knees before Kalia, sliding her tongue between the other woman's fingers to taste her musky sweetness. Kalia threw her head back as Ashara slipped her own fingers inside her, and her tongue caressed her wet folds. The merchant's hand retreated as she tried to support herself on the small table. It shuddered in her grasp, so she chose instead to fall backward onto the bed, her feet remaining on the floor and Ashara's mouth between her legs. Ashara held on, her tongue lapping at Kalia's flesh as the merchant wailed, a low, strained tone of frantic need. The sound sent chills through Ashara, making her fingers thrust harder to change the rhythm of the merchant's desire, to make her feel anything more than the remembered anguish that she felt now. Kalia's back arched, her body bucking around Ashara's fingers as she clutched the silken blankets. Then she lay still, gasping for her breath in little choked sobs. Ashara reached out again, feeling her way along the web of Kalia's memories until she found what she was looking for. But she hesitated to take them up, instead looking warily at the merchant. Do you want me to leave? Tears rolled down Kalia's face until she wiped them fiercely away. No. The word was almost a snarl as she reached out and pulled Ashara up on the bed beside her. Her hands were rough on the thief's body as she tugged her remaining garments off. You know too much about me, little thief. Tell me something of yourself while I discover some of what your heart desires. Ashara moaned as the merchant's teeth found the tender flesh of her breast, her tongue soothing the marks away an instant later. I'm an apprentice to... She managed to stop herself from saying Marian's name aloud as Kalia thrust her leg between her own. A thief, one of the clans. She gasped this last, relieved that she'd managed to lie enough to spare the old man a death by the rope. He, at least, had been kinder to her than her own family and deserved better. Indeed, I don't believe you, little one. Kalia's fingers thrust their way suddenly into Ashara's waiting wetness, making her buck against them. Almost without meaning to, she rode their pressure, Kalia's mouth seemingly everywhere all at once, licking and biting. Alternately trembling with fear and desire, Ashara wailed, her body convulsing around Kalia's fingers and tongue. The merchant moved suddenly, twisting so that Ashara was pinned beneath the hot silkiness of her flesh and the bed beneath her. The merchant's mouth was fire on her own, and Ashara slipped a little further along the web that linked their memories. For a moment, she was Kalia's beloved, and her eyes were filled with the ghost of remembered love. For a moment, Kalia was the lover she dreamed of, the one who would see her as beautiful despite her scarred face. In that moment, too, she was the master of the heart and knew the secrets of the wards that held it in place. But it was too much, and she broke free at the other woman's next words, shivering in reaction as their link was lost. What's the scar from, thief? Kalia's lips thinned as she trapped Ashara's limbs with her own as the smaller woman bucked and writhed in her efforts to get free. Finally, she sagged into the bed, realizing the futility of her struggles. She closed her eyes, shutting out Kalia's face with an effort. It was a gift from my mother's husband. He gets drunk and he hurts us, my sisters and me. Once I was too slow, I will not be so slow again. She opened her eyes, letting the rage inside her meet the grief in Kalia's along the tendrils of their connection. This time she felt the merchant reach back, sending a wave of cold fury at the wizard who slew her beloved. At her beloved, for fighting a magical duel that he was certain to lose. Then she felt the death of the other wizard, Kalia's beloved's foe, felt it as a tendril of magic so wrong that she recoiled in shock. For a moment she couldn't see his death, see him disappear with a scream while Kalia raised the heart high above her head, its fatal rays gleaming around her. 
The realization that the gem could be used for death magic shook Ashara to her core. Perhaps Marian's desires were not so clear as they seemed. He must know what the gem could do in the wrong hands. Death magic was so forbidden that immediate execution awaited those who were caught attempting it. Kalia's life would be forfeit if anyone found out that she merely knew how to use such powers, let alone had used them. She felt something more in Kalia, a cold pain, a loathing for what she had done with the power of the heart. The merchant's voice broke into her thoughts. The thief clans do not train their minds this way. Kalia's lips twisted. Now tell me who you really are, little thief, and why you chose my home to rob. She settled her body down on Ashara's, so close that the thief gasped for breath, desire choking her thoughts. Ashara scrambled for words. Would the merchant simply kill her to keep her secret? It would be easy enough to accomplish, helpless as she was. Still, Kalia's flesh called an answering song from her own, letting her thighs grow slick and wet with it. She wanted the merchant's fingers inside her again, her tongue on her flesh. Kalia ground her ample hips against Ashara's narrow ones and ran her tongue up the thief's neck. She smiled when Ashara wailed and squirmed, her body begging for things that her lips would not. Just tell me, little thief. I won't hurt you, and I won't give you to the governor's guard. I merely want to know who knows so much about me. Ashara surrendered, craving Kalia's touch. My master was once a merchant like yourself until he fell from the governor's favor. He wants the heart to return him to the wealth he knew. Ashara rocked her hips a little in hopes of displacing the merchant. Any more of this, and she would answer any question the other woman asked without meaning to. Hmm, that would be old Marian, wouldn't it? No, don't bother to deny it. I can feel the truth in you. Kalia looked thoughtful, but her voice was cold and it boded no good to Marian. How foolish of him. The heart chooses its own master. He cannot bargain it away like a bauble in the marketplace. Is that how you got it? Ashara whispered the question, almost too fearful to ask it at all. It was a gift from my beloved. It accepted me on a day that I still curse. My lover died trying to protect it, and I merely died with him. But I survived and used its powers against his slayer. Kalia's eyes burned with the memory, and the emptiness inside her almost swept Ashara away with it. I protect it because it is what I have left of him. Marian will do no better with it than I have. Ashara's thoughts raced frantically. She was torn. Perhaps she could distract the merchant enough to escape and warn her master. But then why should she? Would he kill her himself if he thought she knew about the gem's powers? Uncertainty filled her, but she found that desire was stronger. Squirming, she reached up and kissed Kalia's full lips, the touch of her mouth hot on the other woman's. It was enough to distract the merchant. Kalia shifted so that her plump thigh thrust its way between Ashara's, smiling at the thief's gasp. She nuzzled Ashara's ear, her teeth nipping the tender skin. The little thief rocked her moist slit against Kalia's leg, groaning as a wave of heat spread its way through her. Kalia's hand found her breast and pinched the tender skin into hardness as Ashara's back arched away from the bed. Her body shook as bolt after bolt shot through her, leaving her breathless and collapsed beneath the merchant's curves. Kalia's eyes locked with hers, and she knew the merchant was no threat to her. In a moment... Ashara realized what she must do. She reached out with all her power, diving effortlessly through the merchant's memories, searching for one that she could use. She found it in the last quarrel the merchant had with her lover before he left for the battle that would end his life. Relentlessly, she dragged it to the surface of the merchant's mind, letting the other woman relive it. Ashara held her tight soothing the anguish as it rose, allowing it to ebb away through the web that linked them. Carefully, she did the same with some of Kalia's other memories until the merchant shut her eyes and rolled away, her face wet with tears. 
Almost, Ashara wept with her as she released the web that bound them together, horrified that she had caused such pain. But she reached for the merchant, letting her mouth and hands convey what she wanted to say. She explored Kalia's body with nimble fingers and tongue, caressing and coaxing until the merchant trembled with pleasure and release. They held each other, flesh pressed to flesh, until Kalia's eyes closed in sleep, her breathing slowing. The little thief planted a soft kiss on her lips and smiled down at her, the expression lighting her face until it seemed whole. Then Ashara rose silently from the bed. Gathering her clothes, she crept forward until she reached the door. She glanced back at Kalia's face, watching the old pain slip away like the tide. Then Ashara turned, still smiling, and slipped through the barely opened door. She pulled her clothes on as she went, glancing from side to side for early waking servants and guards. The room stood as open as they had left it. She and Kalia and the multiple hearts sat waiting on their pedestals. She pulled her tunic back on before she turned confidently to the stones. This time, she knew which one to choose and walked toward it without glancing at the others. She paused before it for a long moment, thinking about what she would do with the powers of such a gem at her command. She imagined a palace in Ondas, one near the sea where her sisters and mother could come and live with her. She imagined Marian restored to his old life so that he did not pursue her. Then she imagined Kalia, healed and able to love once more. Then she murmured the words she had heard in the merchant's mind, releasing the wards before she reached for the gem. This time when she touched it, there was no shock. The stone came up into her hands as if it greeted an old friend, and her heart sang a little. Ashara placed the heart of El Kiraz into her pack and slipped silently from the treasure chamber. She didn't think Sher Kalia would miss it, and she smiled at the thought as she made her way out and away from the city. And that's our story. If your desire for fantastic erotic audio fiction isn't sated, you can join our latest patron, Cleo, and get more every month over on the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash nobilis. Right now, patrons are receiving chapters of the third book in the Monster Whisperer series. After that, we'll have to see. Come and join the community. You have been listening to the Nobilis Erotica podcast. The music is composed and performed by Mass Relay. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Until next time, listen hard.